All right, ZBrush community. So I want to show you guys, this is a clamp I'm making for Roman Emperor that I'm working at. So I want to show you how I did the ring part of this. Um, because I used, built this strictly straight from ZBrush, straight from scratch. And I also think the technique I used for this, uh, a lot of people aren't exploring with this, and that is the primitives. So what I did here is I have these primitives here, and what I did is select the circle 3D. I'm going to put this in polyframe mode. So again, Shift F does that. We click on frame, and now I have this 3D primitive that's just a flat plane. And what I'm going to do is let's make sure the display properties is in double, so when I rotate it, it doesn't disappear. All right, and then I'm going to go to the initialize state, and this is where. I played with these settings to be able to get what I wanted to because I needed to get a hole in the middle of this. So how I did that is I went to my radius here. I changed my start to 60 and then I changed the end to 60 and voila, now I have that hole. And th there was just too much detail in here so I went ahead and I changed my uh, vertical dimension to 4 and this is not enough smooth edging here, so I just bump this up, bump that up to whatever you want, 51 seems to look good to me here. So this is exactly what I want, that looks great for a great start for me, a nice little base start. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is make this a poly mesh now. So go ahead and make it a poly mesh. Now we'll have poly groups available. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to make each one of these sections their own poly group. So the easiest way for me to do this is I uh, went ahead and select my lasso, Obviously, to hide anything, you can control shift, let go of shift, and whatever's in the red is going to be hidden. Oops, sorry about that, I messed. So, again, control shift, let go of shift, and that'll be hidden. So, now I've hidden that first ring part. So, let's group this visible so now I have another group. So, now I want to make these two their own polygroups. So, again, control shift, same technique, let go of shift whatever's in the red, okay, we're going to be hiding, and now make that its own polygroup. Uh, I had a purple already and a green, so if you keep hitting control uh, group visible, you'll get different colors. So now to get the all the mesh back here, I'm going to hold control shift and click on my canvas. So now as you see, I have a mesh here with the three rings being their own polygroups. And what I want to get at is this middle ring right here, this green one. So now that they're polygroups, I can hold control shift and click on certain parts of this mesh to get to just this ring. Okay? So now that I have just this ring selected, I'm going to want to go to my geometry, and I'm going to want to hit edge loop. So you see what happens, it creates another set of rings, but it also polygroups them for me. Now I want to get at that middle pink section right there. So I'm going to control shift again and hide that skin tone color. Now I have just this middle section. Now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to mask off this whole section that I have right here of the mesh. So I can do that by clicking control and clicking on my canvas and you see it masks it all off. I can also select the lasso, hold control and select everything. So now everything is masked. Of course you can also go to your masking here and tell it to mask all. Okay. Now that I have that all masked off, I want to bring back the whole mesh again because I'm going to do some manipulation now. So control shift and click will bring everything back. So now the only part that's masked off is that middle pink section, but I want to inverse that. So I'm going to inverse that so now everything else is masked off but that little pink section right there. So my next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my deformations. Okay? And I'm going to go to gravity. I'm going to switch my gravity to a Z. I'm going to tell in the Z axis I want you to manipulate. So we have this flat surface now, but now with my gravity in the Z axis, I'm going to go ahead and play with this. As you see now, I can start pulling that mesh up, or if I want to, I can go down. So I want it to be up for this part of my mesh. So that looks pretty good to me. So now what we need to do is I need to clear the masking that I have, okay? So we can do that by going into our masking palette and hitting clear. Alright, and again another shortcut with that, control shift A would also be a shortcut for that. 
So this looks pretty good. This is like a good start, but now I need to get that thickness that I had um, on the, the one I showed you on this ring here that I have. So how I have this thickness right here. I need to get some of that thickness now. Okay. What, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go into my sub tool palette and I'm going to play with my extract features here. So very simple. You have a thickness, you have a smooth edge, you have a smooth surface. So let's see what the default gives us. Okay, so we're going to go to our default mesh. Yeah, I'm not. That thickness isn't quite there. I don't like the way that looks. Um, not looking like what I want. So here's the beauty of this. I can go back to my circle here and start playing now with these settings and not lose anything. Because as you see, when you extract, you make a new sub tool. So let's play with some thickness. Let's see, uh, let's see what this looks like. So now we go here and go, yeah, that's a little bit thicker. I'm liking where that thickness is. It's looking a little bit better. But obviously, I'm losing some of that detail I have here. OK, so let's go back, because I'm losing this right here, which I, I don't want to. Um, I'll even bump up my thickness a little bit more. That's good. Um, so what's causing that is the smooth. So what I did was drop these down to one each, and went ahead and extracted that. And there we go. That's definitely giving me a little bit more of what I want. Okay. But here's the beauty: I can still play with this and manipulate this because I still have poly groups. So I still can do whatever I want to this mesh. So if I want to bring these out more, that out, that surface out more, it's really simple to do by using my poly groups. Okay. So let's let's delete these other ones because I don't want these, and let's work on this. The one thing going to happen though is I need to get my subdivision level up because I'm not going to be able to add a lot of detail like I did to the other tool. So here's what's going to happen when I start dividing, it's going to start smoothing out this. I don't want that. Okay. So one thing of course you could do is you can turn smooth off here and divide, and you just see you're walking up in subdivision levels, but you're not losing any of your detail, but also remember this facet here, and I don't want that either. So that's not going to work for me. 